you're you're kind of get you're getting into graphic design. How far into that are you? Ah, uh, so I've done. Let's see. So it's been an interest of mine for a long period of time, probably mm -hmm. about a decade. And I did a year of schooling for it at George Brown College uh, two years ago. Mm -hmm. So, and I've done some freelance work, some for like uh, organizations related to the city of Toronto. Um, I had a billboard up um, at Queen Street West at one point in time. Um, so, I don't know, I've done a little bit cool. here and there. Yeah. Are yeah. uh, you a uh, Photoshop user? Or uh, yeah, Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, kind of the basic. Uh, so, you're getting into vector or? Yeah, I mean, that's Illustrator. Illustrator yeah. is all vector and related to more of the logo design, yeah. that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But uh, okay. a little bit of web design as well. So that's what I'll be uh, diving deep into this cool. next year. Have you ever heard of the GNU Image Manipulation Program, a.k.a. GIMP? No. Really? No. So think Actually, about GIMP, it does sound familiar, but please explain. Well, think about uh, Photoshop. Yeah. And it is a very pricey application, especially yeah, now that true. it's on a licensing model. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the GIMP is essentially a, a, an RGB-only um, alternative, but it's absolutely free. It's open source. Oh, okay. So kind of like how Linux is an open source alternative to, right. um, to Microsoft Windows. Okay. Or even Mac OS, if you wanted to go there. Okay. So where would you, like, could you get it? Is it just directly accessible through the internet? Yeah, or? free download, yeah. gimp.org. Okay. Gimp. Uh, so you can head on over to there to get the GIMP. Yeah. Um, it's available on Windows, Mac, or Linux. Oh, okay. Um, so great. we're using it on Linux. Oh, great. Um, one of the neat things about um, Linux is that because it's free, and, and GIMP is, is also free, um, people think, hey, it would be really good to be able to do this, and then someone codes it and then releases it for free. Okay. On Windows, it's not the same because it's a proprietary environment. The people who make it have to say, oh, we'd, yeah, we agree that's a great feature, so we'll add it in the next big release or something mm -hmm, like that, mm -hmm. right? So one really, really simple um, comparison, a little Linux tip for you, um, is Unicode characters. Are we familiar with Unicode at all? Unicode is, so you think about the keys on your keyboard, you've got A through Z and everything else. Uh, those are Unicode characters. But our keyboard only can handle 104 keys or whatever it happens to be because of space restrictions. And of course, you wouldn't want a keyboard that wraps all around you. But Unicode itself, so the, the amount of letters, characters, numbers, and figures that are available to you are vastly larger than what's available on your keyboard. So you think about, for example, an M dash, or uh, the pound sign for the for the currency, or the euro. Like these are all characters, yeah, but how yeah. do you how do you type that into a keyboard? Right, right, right. And that's where Unicode comes in. So is this available, let's say, in Microsoft Word as one of the language, like not languages, but one of the scripts or? Well, you can, you know? that's a bit hacky how do you, to how change do you? your font. Oh, okay. You could change your font to a Unicode enable, or yeah, okay. use the, the ability, uh, you know, Word has a um, special character selector or something like that. Yeah, yeah. But we can actually type Unicode with our keyboard. Oh, okay. So um, it's absolutely possible. In Word, using that as an example, and this is where Windows is very much different than Linux, it's a bit of a pain in the butt. Or it's not quite as, well, on Windows, it's not as universal. It works in Word mm -hmm. and pretty much in nothing else. Okay. Maybe WordPad, but not Notepad. Um, Unicode characters have to be inputted in a special way. Um, so you have to, first of all, know the Unicode character. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna hop onto Google here and type Unicode characters, and you can just do that and find uh, some of the characters that are available to you. So Unicode Unicode-table.com is a huge repository of them, and you'll just be blown away at what's available. So it starts with the normal alphabet, and then you get into kind of foreign characters and accents. Uh, we see a lot of that in the French language uh, in typing. Um, so, you know, being able to do uh, accent circumflex, <laughs> those kinds of things. <laughs> all right. So once you know the character codes that you want, you see all those? Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. just huge. Like, it's just loading and loading and loading. Now, uh, on Windows, in order to do that, I need to bring up um, Microsoft Word. And then in order to type it, I have to press Alt-X right, in right. Word. Yeah punch in the Unicode number, right. hit enter, 
and wow. then it converts into the Unicode. Okay. But it doesn't work in any other application. Right, right. On Linux, on the other hand, all I have to do is press Control Shift U and it works universally. Oh. So to demonstrate that, even in, let's say, my address bar, I wouldn't be surprised if it works there. It did. So see what happens in Linux? It creates a U with an underline. So any application that I am in, so if I head over to, let's just bring up Pluma, for example, my text editor. Mm -hmm. And if I hit Control-Shift-U, now I have an underlined U. And you think, oh, that's an underlined U. Well, it's not. It's actually waiting for me to input a Unicode number. Okay. And then I can input it. So okay. we know, for example, uh, an M dash is uh, 2014. It's really easy to remember because the year just passed. Oh, okay. So if you ever need an M dash, it's yeah. 2014. The number is universal. So yeah. if you're on Windows, wow. you, it's still 2014, but you just have to go about inputting it a little bit more roundabout because you've oh, got to go into Word, hit Alt I X. See, I see. On Linux, I don't care what application you're on, Control Shift U and it's waiting for a number. Wow. So it's waiting right now, I'm gonna hit 2014 and then hit enter, and it Im immediately turns it into an M dash. Wow. So similarly, control shift U, and if I wanna use, uh, let's say the Euro symbol, so 20AC, enter, and there it is. Wow. Okay. So in terms of the, the types of professions or people that use Unicode most frequently, who would that be? Well, or is it just for general users and the convenience of being able to create all of these different kinds of, of I guess, types characters of characters? Characters that you don't have yeah, access yeah, yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. And that's how, and, and thank you for the beautiful segue, because at the beginning of this segment, <laughs> we started talking about graphic editing and how does right. this relate to graphic editing. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to look at a uh, web, what is traditionally used as a web developer's tool, and it's called Font Awesome. Ooh. It's just like it sounds. So we go to fontawesome.io. And what Font Awesome allows you to do, and we've seen this on the show before, uh, Font Awesome allows you to use icon sets within a font. So on the web, we do this using CSS classes. Right, right. So if I need a snowflake or if I need a little fire logo right, or an ID right, right. card, all of these things can be used in our web design or in our demonstration tonight, they can be used in our, um, in our graphic design. Mm -hmm. But how do we translate something that's built for web into something that we can use now in the GNU image manipulation program or Microsoft Word, I suppose, because mm -hmm. if you're on Windows, you could install this as well, the same way we're going to do it here on Linux but then you'd have to hit alt X and use the Unicode character because watch what happens here as I'm looking at these. So let's say the, you know, let, let's just pick one if I want the envelope. And if I scroll down a little ways, so that's what it looks like. And you see here, Unicode F2B6. So as long as we have Font Awesome, we can use the Unicode character F2B6 and it will create an envelope. Okay. Because it is a, a TTF, a font, mm -hmm. it can be any size. It's vector. Okay. We can scale it to any size and it, will be, it can be huge. It can be part of our graphic. Mm -hmm. uh, it, we can use them as bullet list um, images, icons, those kinds of things. So in order to get it, uh, let's just go back to the home and you'll see a button called download. Nice and straightforward. And scroll down a little bit here. And we can just say, no thanks, just download Font Awesome 4, unless you would like to uh, support them by purchasing the commercial release. Okay, so Font Awesome is downloaded just like that. We've got fonts and we have all kinds of stuff here. Uh, looks like uh, we've got a TTF, which is a Windows True Type font, and then mm -hmm. we've got an OTF, which is an open type, uh, uh, type font. And um, that is, you know, we can use either or. Um, on Linux, both are supported. If I open that, let's see here. I may have to extract it first. So I'm just going to extract that, throw it on my desktop. And on Windows, it's, uh, it's no different. Now let's try opening this. Let's see, open with Font Viewer. Let's see if it comes up. No, I've got a few different Font Viewers installed. But, well, hopefully that one will work. I love how smoothly you're going through this. It's like watching someone do magic or something like that. Magic. <laughs> magic. <laughs> the magic art of Robbie Ferguson. I'm going to try installing it. I just hit install and let's see if that, if that actually did it. Um, so I can check that by going into 
Uh, thanks for the compliment, by the way. Oh, yeah, Magic, for sure. You know? uh, let's just make sure that we've got the font. I'm just using this to see. So if I type in um, font awesome, it is there. Okay. So again, here I am in LibreOffice Writer. Uh, this is a free alternative to Microsoft Word, and I am using it in Linux. And because I am using it in Linux, what's the key combination I can use? Anybody remember? F2B6? That's a oh, good one. That's the envelope. Alt, alt X, Alt X. In Word. Shift. That's, if you're, that's only if you're in Windows. Oh, in Windows. On Linux, it doesn't uh, matter what control program U? I'm in. Control Shift U. Oh, control Shift U. And then what was the code that you gave me? Oh, F2B6? I'm not sure. Let's try it. Enter. Ooh. Way to go. <laughs> okay, so now I've got that graphic in because I've selected Font Awesome as my font. Mm -hmm. And I can set it to any size I'd like. Oh, and wow. it's going to be lossless because it's vector. Right, okay? right, right, of course. So bringing that over to the graphic design end of things, we can go into GNU Image Manipulation Program. And one of the things that we find, and you, you see this in Photoshop and other applications as well, is that bullet lists can sometimes be not very pretty because there's really no, like there's no ULs and LIs, there's no bullets mm -hmm. per se. Mm -hmm. It's all done through graphics. So mm -hmm. let's create a really quick graphic. I'll just make something that's about 1,000 by 1,000 square. And then I'm going to create a text layer. This is the GNU Image Manipulation Program. It's absolutely free and available at GIMP.org. So once I've created this, I can say, hello. Hi. I'm really creative with my lorem ipsums. I can do that. <laughs> there we go. OK. So if I want bullet points now, you know, traditionally, we're, <laughs> we're going to mm -hmm. do a hyphenation or something like that. Mm -hmm. Well, what I can actually do is we can hit uh, let's change our font for this particular spot. And we're just going to type in font awesome. And then I'm going to type control shift U. And what was the code? Oh, F2B6, right? There you go. Okay. So then I can, I can either continue to copy uh, or continue to type that or mm -hmm. I can copy and paste mm -hmm. it wow. just like that. And now, cool. now we're using an envelope but it could be a check mark or it could mm -hmm. be anything else. Wow. And because it's a font, it's going to be, it's going to be nicely matched up to the, the pixel height of the font that you're using right, right. and those kind of things. So that's Font Awesome from fontawesome.io. Definitely a great tool uh, for web design because it is a web font. You can use it um, just by specifying the CSS class. And, uh, and we've shown that again on the show before. Um, so head on over to category5.tv and do a quick search for font awesome sounds like i named it <laughs> <laughs> awesome <laughs> this could be something that you could use in in business mm -hmm. and you've had it happen where you know formatting is different on one computer or something and bullets aren't looking quite right remember oh, the yeah. check boxes yes so you 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 know you had a form where in one application it had a nice square for people to check off mm -hmm. On, on this the, printout. And then on the other one, it, the box already had an X in it, as though so everything yeah, right. had already been checked off. So you could install <laughs> Font Awesome, the font, mm -hmm. and then use the Unicode character for the square, and boom, and would, you've got it. I love it. Fancy, fancy. Awesome. Fantastic. You just, you just got a raise, <laughs> Sasha. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs>